Hi everyone, it's Natalie from Items 8 and Louise from the Lunacy team. Welcome to our podcast. Uh, so as uh, developers of products for designers, we work with and listen closely to the design community and we often get questions or see conversations about uh, where and why UI design is headed. Yeah, and so we gathered a lot of interesting questions over time and we thought, why not talk about them? And one of those questions, one of the most important in my opinion, is what is a designer's job really? You know, on our team, we ask ourselves the same question, obviously. And actually, sometimes we go a bit deeper, almost existential. Like, what does a designer see in their flashback before death? Wait, what? <laughs> no, 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 hear me out. No one's actually in danger here. Uh, what we mean basically is what would a designer see when they think back to all the work that they've done in their life? And actually, it's kind of weird and funny, but we always joke that actually a large portion of the time that we are designing, we're all just recoloring default gray rectangles or Googling references and pictures for our projects. And that's in a lot of Mipsum texts. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, like rounding corners, for example. Uh, and of course, at the end of all of that routine, you get these beautiful pixel perfect designs, but... Can you imagine how long these minor tasks take when you add all of them up? Yeah, it would be so long. Uh, too long. Uh, and yet, designers are all expected to do these things by hand without the help of the software that they're using. Yeah, and then why is this happening? I mean, why are we still doing all these things manually, seriously? Now we think about it, and, you know, literally every design tutorial, um, they just go with, well, you make a shape, or a frame, or you around the corners, and all this other technical stuff. However, why not have the program to do all this stuff for us? Exactly. And it's become the norm. People just assume that you have to do all of this by hand. But personally, I don't think so. With features that speed up your workflow, like components and variants. Oh, and auto layout. It's such a cool feature. Yeah, with all that, you definitely spend less time than before on these tasks and the speed of the market and the speed of technology is constantly increasing like before you could be building a website for several months on end or even a year my gosh that was like yesterday but it actually feels like forever ago do you remember this like the firstly the manager describes the desired project the designer makes a prototype and design uh, also the designer looks for pictures or the manager even orders illustrations from professionals or that uh, and then the copywriter writes the texts, and you know, two million of meeting calls later, finally the layout designer take care of the layout itself. But after some time, uh, web page design was standardized. There were stocks, firstly, with uh, really made photos and illustrations. All this really speeds things up. And then the landing page constructors came about. Oh, like Webflow, yeah. It does the job for you. Yeah, products like that are making web design uh, literally accessible to anyone. Uh, they don't even need any design experience from you. And other than that, uh, the manager using ChatGPT can actually replace a copywriter in the team. So as the result, a landing page can be made in a single day. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and now, actually, the longer you do it, the greater the chance that someone else is going to take over this niche or make the, you know, release the product before you do. And the sooner that you release the product, the sooner users will get to experience and endorse it. So the faster a designer works, the faster a business can take advantage of opportunities. And more valuable the actual designer. And sure, yeah. And what I mean is, with all of these tools, designers still spend a lot on menial design tasks. Uh, and this takes away from the time that they could spend thinking in detail about UX and interacting with their users about how they can improve their experience with the product uh, and with the business as a whole. Uh, so, what comes next in the design industry? I mean, it's clear that there is a demand for new solutions and the major solutions in the market, they are coming up with all these new features and ideas, but is it inventive enough? I definitely think there could be more, more innovation, more automation, and uh, that would lead to more space for creativity. And I feel like it's time for design software developers to rethink their approach somewhat. Absolutely. Uh... I think users shouldn't have to constantly switch between different tools or search for individual design elements, at least. All these 
uh, shouldn't be social time consuming part of their job like it is now. Yeah, someone who's lost a lot of hours scouring Pinterest, Dribble, and Behance for references, I can agree. Uh, you can really waste hours of your valuable time searching for the right icons or pictures or copy pasting placeholder text and such, while all of this could just be in one window, one app readily available. And also, I think that's um, where this problem of starting off with a blank slate comes into play. Uh, you know, when you're left alone with a blank canvas and you're feeling overwhelmed and unsure where to start. I mean, like right now, some of the most popular Figma community files are mostly those that contain presets like UI kits, palettes, and styles where design elements are there at the ready. Because it's all pre-made and it's ready for designers to use it. And that's actually what we all need. Yeah, true. And by incorporating, uh, you know, like reasonable default values for stuff like grid spacing or having the app help with colors and styles and layer management. If these little things are present in the design software, designers can explore the creative aspects of their work rather than getting, uh, you know, distracted by all these mundane tasks that can actually take up too much time. I think that's actually where the future of design software is headed, uh, at least in the ideal world as I see it. Um, I mean, when I imagine a designer's perfect workflow, all these needs and minor tasks, they all addressed and taken care of by the software. And it goes beyond that too. I feel the goal should be creating some kind of all-in-one platform, uh, which can bring together various design elements. And the most popular design programs right now, like Figma, Sketch, XD, they rely on plugins to have ready-made elements and helpful assets for designers, which is kind of helpful in some way, but they don't really integrate these time-saving features and functions into the app themselves. Like, I always get so annoyed when no matter what plugin you're using, a single click at the close window button and you have to go back to the top menu and then to the plugin list. And then the plugin might have a long time loading. So you wait for this plugin. And the plugin settings are all reset. So true. That's why I think that wide plugin support, it's not really equal to truly quality building features. Yeah. And, and in general, it's understandable that programs can't immediately do a 180 and change their priorities because uh, every design program has its own vision at the core of it. Like take Figma, for example, uh, regarding their mission, they say it's to make design accessible to everyone. And uh, like as in the future, they look forward to, they describe it as collaborative and community driven and borderless. And it's obvious from the history of their development that they're so very focused on the collaboration and accessibility part of their uh, app. And though even that is pretty questionable, even though they're all about borderless accessibility, Ability. Any designer who's stuck somewhere with a weak internet connection is basically unable to work on their projects. Yeah, that's not really borderless, I think. And I wonder if their mission stays following this, you know, Figma's acquisition by Adobe. It's actually difficult to tell what's going to come of it. You know, what with the Department of Justice making effort to block the deal. You know, we don't know if it will go through at all eventually. But it's really made such a big impact on the community already with, um, you know, people worrying about the design market possibly being monopolized by Adobe. And the concern is so high because having the entire sphere of design spinning around just one major player means that designers would be limited by that one player's vision and their job would revolve around it. Not the greatest world, if you ask me. Yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty uh, happening around this Figma situation. And the design market has changed a lot in the past 10, even just five years. So who knows what it will look like in just a year at this point, uh, when, you know, the whole world evolving faster than we all can imagine. And, you know, uh, recently I was looking at the design tool survey and there is a chart called UI design tool growth. Uh, you know, like I already have a rough idea of how the tools market evolved, but when you see a visual chart, you see all the turning points in it. For example, in 2017, Sketch held more than 70% market share and Figma had about 10%. But in 2018, Sketch started losing ground to Figma's rising popularity and the turning point uh, when Figma took the lead 
happened between 2019 and 2020 when collaboration became a really important aspect. And by 2022, Figma held almost 90% market share. We've sketched some higher at around 10%. And I think it is all happening partly, at least, because remote work became more of a thing. And then almost everyone was working remotely because of the pandemic. That's right. And remote work means collaboration. And that's what Adobe XD and Creative Cloud as a whole focus on, too. They put a lot of emphasis on cloud collaboration and cross-platform compatibility. Speaking about collaboration, um, you know, to collaborate using Adobe products, designers need to do like a lot they need to have a firstly powerful devices they need to have gigabytes of free space on their discs because all these products they are pretty space consuming ones and in the end of it all uh, we should buy a license on the top of that to use adobe products uh, but still you know other than that uh, adobe has developed a efficient collaboration system with their cloud system yeah they have and now all of these tools have evolved into really powerful apps that are specifically built for UI designers with the designer's workflow in mind. And there's actually a lot of automation in them with collaboration. And this includes auto layouts, components, invariants, and shared libraries and built-in presets. But is it all really enough? Well, I think it will never be enough from some points. Yeah, but speaking about us and our team, uh, you know, of course, we're focused on adding all of the functions that we see in popular design apps, like the ones we've already added, include auto layouts and components and shared libraries and collaboration features, and we'll continue to keep up. And this is also so that users who come over to Lunacy don't have to adapt to a totally new interface and logic that may not be as convenient. Well, you kind of should have it all in 2023. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then on the other hand, we don't want to be a Figma or Sketch clone because that would be kind of pointless. We see what designers are struggling with, uh, you know, in these their apps that they're working on and the tasks that take too much time or effort. And we strive to add features that these other apps don't have, like auto shape coloring or smart layer list. Don't forget the auto index feature. Yeah, yeah. And for example, uh, you know, regarding other apps, like Figma recently made an effort to boost productivity with this bunch of minor but important updates recently, if you've heard of them. Oh, this, uh, the 32 little big updates you're talking about, right? Yeah. And if you look through them, you see that they've added support for uh, new image formats, improved performance and bug fixes, added more shortcuts and simplified file navigation. But these are mostly fixes to Figma's behavior based on user feedback and not anything in terms of powerful automating features. I think it would be great you know, if we did have some software that not only meets the existing demand, but also anticipate future needs. Um, like as the design industry evolves and new challenges arise, the software should evolve alongside offering these flexible and scalable solutions for users. I believe that automation and productivity will play a significant role, for example, with the help of AI, which is already kind of happening. But what I really want to see in the future is more like involvement from designers uh, in training AI models, because right now training AI tools is something that mostly machine learning experts do. Yeah, I agree. And at this point, uh, AI tools already exist that can literally turn hand-drawn sketches into fully rendered pictures. It's like Sketch AI and Viscom. And I feel like something along those lines for UI design would be a powerful addition to any designer's workflow. And out of the tools that I mentioned, I really like the results that Viscom had. I tried drawing the simplest chicken scrawl sketches on paper of things that were on my desk, like a lamp or a mouse, and got pretty realistic interpretations of those objects. Such a magic, magic of AI. And speaking of sketches, there is also another example. Uh, these guys say that they can turn sketches and screenshots into not only a static image, but an actual editable interface. Their name is UseArt. I'm not sure how to pronounce that correctly. And I've tried it several times. It works with some basic elements like buttons, text, text plus holders, and so on. But I feel like this uh, tool is still kind of struggling with something more complex. You also gave it a try, right? Yeah, I did. And actually, 
tried uh, Googling already existing interface sketches of, um, you know, sc screenshots that uh, UIZard advertises in its demos, but the results weren't as good as they show anyway. And I tried it with, you know, my own UI sketches, and I have no idea if I was doing something wrong, but it really doesn't seem to understand the context. Like things that I sketch as images or menu items get rendered as buttons or checkboxes. Which is pretty sad. Yeah, you know, but it's not as sad as redrawing your sketches or dribble shots by hand. And at least partially you can get some ready-made elements thanks to AI. And by the way, I saw that they released another tool called Auto Designer, which creates designs based on text prompts and can actually tweak them according to keywords and use different styles and such. Well, uh, I also heard about it. I didn't try it out yet, but I saw some YouTube reviews from influencers of this AI tool, and it definitely has a lot of potential to help designers do their job, or actually could take their job away from them, as many designers' worries already happening. I wouldn't go as far as to say I would take away their jobs. I mean, designers do make projects directly for people, and I feel like they have a certain level of insight into the human experience that is unbelievable by AI, at least for a long, long time to come. But in any case, it definitely sounds like a topic for an entire episode. And we might just make it in the future. Uh, yeah, tell us if you'd be interested in that. Yeah, but for now, though, let's wrap up today's podcast and thank you guys so much for listening likes shares and comments are always appreciated and definitely tell us what you think a designer's ideal workflow is and what role you think ai will play in the future of ui design we'd love to hear your opinions and thank you for joining us today until next time keep designing and embracing new opportunities <laughs>